UFC Fight Night Tui Vasa versus Ty Bora is this week. I'm going to give you a full card prediction breakdown of all 13 fights on this card, starting with Chad and Hellinger versus Carlampos Gregorio. Gregorio? Um, I'm going to go with Chad and Hellinger for this one. I mean, Carl. Oh my, I don't even know. How do I even start by saying this name? Carl Lampos. Uh, he was on the Contender Series. He did fight Cameron Smotherman on one of the most cursed cards, you could say, of the entire Contender Series. One that actually made me very angry because there's multiple prospects that lost. Uh, I think we had, what was it, Smotherman I was really looking at because he had a, a lot of talent. And then we had George Hardwick lose at the, the end of that card as well. So it was, it was a very rough one to watch. But he did end up getting the KO over Cameron Smotherman, who I do think will eventually be back on the Contender Series and possibly back into the UFC. He's just he's just very raw at this point, so we'll see where he looks like uh, in a couple of years, maybe another year, who knows. Uh, but he did get that nice KO over him. But I will say, I, I just think Ann Hellinger is that that veteran who's just going to be a little bit more, I don't want to say consistent, but I, I think... He's going to do his job where he's going to circle around. He fought a more difficult opponent in Jose Johnson, who's a lot longer than uh, Carl Lampos and who, who did throw a lot of stuff down the middle, who eventually did get into the grappling, although he was a lot bigger, so he was winning some of the exchanges on the ground. I just don't think uh, Gre Gre Gorio is going to beat Ann Hellinger on the ground. I, I think he is good enough uh, take down the fence, good wrestling defense, and Hellinger does. And I think, especially, I guess they're, they're relatively simpler, like closer in size. I don't think that's going to be a problem there. I know he's 37 years of age. I know Gregor Gregorio is all right on the feet. But I think if Ann Hellinger could survive on the feet against a guy like Jose Johnson, who's pretty dangerous, same thing kind of in Ella Tang. I think if he was able to hang in there on the feet, I think he can win this 129-28 decision. Carl Lampos, though, he does have a pretty solid chance. I, I just... I don't know. He, he's just a little slow for me. Again, I, I just think a guy in Jose Johnson who... Well, let me look at this reach real quick. Um, 71 and a half inches of reach. What What's the reach of uh, Gregorio here? 67 and a half. And Hellinger was able to move out of some pretty good uh, strikes that Jose Johnson had. Again, Jose Johnson was a lot bigger, so he's winning a lot of the, the ground exchanges. I don't think that's going to be the case here. I'm going to go with N. Hellinger by 29-28 decision. I don't know if he, he won't finish Gregorio. I just don't think Gregorio is going to finish N. Hellinger in this fight. But we'll see what happens here. I could be very wrong. Gregorio is like th almost, what, 32 years of age at this point. Trains uh, with Longo and Weidman. So he, he's, he's got a really good training uh, room there. But, again, I'm going to stick with N. Hellinger here. I think he's just going to be that veteran. It's going to be very tough for uh, Gregorio in this one. But who knows? I could be very wrong. So. Uh, but I'm going to go 29-28 decision. I'm kind of just, I, I, I don't even know what to call it. I, I'm kind of just uh, going out on a limb on this one. I'm, I'm kind of predicting what this fight's going to look like because he did win pretty early against Cameron Smotherman. So let's move on. Up the card, we have Corey McKenna versus Jacqueline Amorim. This one's an interesting one. If you're uh, into lower level women's MMA, that probably will end up being the opposite way because it is lower level women's MMA. But anyways, Corey McKenna, I'm going with Corey McKenna. She's a lot smaller than Jacqueline Amorum. Um, I like that. Jacqueline Amorum is actually a pretty decent grappler. However, on the feet, I don't think she's that great. Corey McKenna has definitely evolved a little bit. She's only 24 years of age as well. She's going to be at a, what, a 10-inch reach disadvantage or a 9.5-inch reach disadvantage here, which is kind of rough. But I don't think Amorim's not going to take her down. And I think the fact that she is a lot smaller and has a lot smaller limbs. Well, I guess they're both 5'3". Who, who did Amorim fought, what, Mossrat Ruiz? She looks so much taller than her in her last way. Am I wrong? Oh, okay, she's 3 inches taller. However, I'll just say this. I guess they are the same size, but uh, McKenna looks really small. Like her limbs look really small. I don't think she's, she's going to get submitted by more. she's actually pretty good on the ground as well. And I do think she's a lot further ahead on the feet as well in the striking. So I'm going to go Corey McKenna by decision. I don't think there's going to be a submission either way. I think it's just going to be one of those uh, lower level women's MMA fights. Corey McKenna might have the chance to be something eventually if she continues to uh, evolve a little bit, but again, only 24 years of age. Nine and a half inch reach disadvantage. We'll see how this one goes, but I'm going to go Corey McKenna. 29 28 decision here. Up the card with Joshua Kalibau versus Danny Silva. I'm going Danny Silva. I'm not that big on Joshua Kalibau. I don't think he's that great. I'm going to be honest. Like, he won his fight against Melissa Bagdasarian because Bagdasarian slipped. I don't even think he got knocked off balance. I'm pretty sure he just slipped or, or tripped 
on uh Kalibau's leg and, and he just ended up getting submitted which is good i good good job on Kalibau's part to jump on there and, and get the submission but he's getting pretty much outstruck on on the feet there so um interesting win there but he he lost to larone murphy in his last fight by decision larone murphy definitely put a beat on him towards the end of that fight as well i'm going danny silva danny silva has all the tools he's only 27 years of age as well i think what he's on the contender series five months ago if he puts things together here, I, I think he's definitely going to be a, a prospect to definitely watch out for. He, again, very technical on the feet, has that dog in him. He's a lot of power in his hands as well. I think, again, he's one of those guys you need to watch out for in the UFC, especially if he gets past uh, Joshua Klebau, who I say he's pretty decent in the UFC. I, I don't think there's anything that kind of pops with them. Uh, Sung Wu Choi split decision, which is kind of rough to see there as well. That Melsic back to Syrian, he's getting uh, beaten in that one before getting or capitalizing on the slip there and then was getting beaten pretty badly by uh, Lerone Murphy. One thing I'll say about Kalibau is that when you watch him fight his belly it, it's it's like it's a little jiggly I'm gonna be honest like he, he's, he's got a weaker weaker stomach and I think Danny Silva has really nice uh crisp boxing and I think he's gonna actually beat the crap out of Joshua Kalibau's uh, stomach area and I do think he's gonna win in the second round by TKO I think he just hurts the body way too much and I think Kalibau is just gonna end up shutting down I think Danny Silva is just way too technical on the feet. I think he's actually going to get a lot better here. So I'm actually I'm I'm going to keep a tab on uh, Danny Silva. I'm going to see how he does, um, because I I do think he definitely has the chance to be something. There are like certain situations in his last fight where he's like in the clinch and stuff like that where he didn't seem like as educated in certain spots. But again, he's going to learn some of that stuff. He's only 27. I, just, I want to see how he looks uh, evolving um, in his career. So I'm going Danny Silva. Uh, TKO, I'll say ground and pound maybe. I think he just shuts down Joshua Klebau and just finishes a, it up on the ground. Up the car, we have Tiago Moises versus Mitch Ramirez. This is another, I don't want to say it's an interesting one, but Mitch Ramirez coming into the contender series before fighting Carlos Pratis was actually a guy that was, they, like they gave Carlos Pratis a tougher test on the contender series, I'll say, because Ramirez in his fights, I watched some of his ex-MMA fight, or I think he has one ex-MMA fight, or, or I watched some of his fights leading into that contender series fight, and he's pretty solid everywhere is, is what I'll say. I mean, he, he's he got good wrestling, he's decent enough on the feet, however, I think Tiago Moises is just a level ahead of him. I'm going to be honest, like the guys that Tiago Moises is fighting in the UFC and the guys he's beating in the UFC are a lot greater than what um, Ramirez is fighting. So he beat Mel Quizel Costa. I think, didn't Costa take that one on short notice? I might be wrong there. Uh, he might have taken the fight before. No, that was on short notice. I think it was in, I want to say it was in Brazil. Is that correct? Yeah, 283. I think that might have been on short notice. And, and Costa is a pretty strong guy. He got him to the ground, beat uh, Giagos. Um, Lost to Benoit Saint Denis would, would kind of he, he he was he's being pretty tough in that fight and I I don't think he's gonna go out um, without a fight in this one I don't think Mitch Ramirez is gonna take him to that level that Benoit Saint Denis did because I think Benoit Saint Denis just has that power and that finishing ability that some guys just don't have I think Mitch Ramirez he's a wrestler if he tries to take down Tiago Moises which I think Moises is gonna end up taking him down I think he's just gonna end up getting submitted and Moises is very good on the ground you saw how he did in that Islam Makashe fight before he got to the title and again Islam looks a lot better now than he did coming up I'm gonna be completely honest whenever you or at least when uh, that first I won't say first the second Charles fight I was rewatching their first fight. I was like man like Islam has definitely evolved since then however he gave Islam one of the toughest tests uh, leading up to his uh, championship title run that he has now. So Tiago Moises, I think he even took down Makashev like once or twice in that fight as well. Uh, had him in a couple uh, submission attempts. So Moises is pretty game on the ground. I think he can take down Mitch Ramirez in probably the second round. I think he will do it in the first round as well. But I think in the second round, I think he'll end up submitting Mitch Ramirez. Uh, I'll say rear naked choke. I think Moises is pretty game on the ground. I think he's just a, a level ahead of Mitch Ramirez. So up the card, we have Ode Osborne versus Hafel Philho. I think I'm going to go with Hafel Philho here. I don't believe in Ode Osborne's ground game at all. I, I just feel like he, it's not there. And I, I think similarly to Hafel Philho on the on the feet, I don't think he's that great either. Like, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, didn't he get dropped by a Berez and then he ended up just submitting him? So, I mean, that was pretty interesting as well. You can't really take a Muhammad Makaya fight. I mean... He put him in pretty dangerous situations. He was losing the majority of the fight. However, it feels like Makayev just always in those fights. He, he's always losing 
at, at pretty big points or there's like a big splash of him losing or looking weak and then he ends up finding ways to win. I don't know if you just if he's just going to do that with every fighter on the roster at this point, but um, I mean, he, he had a pretty competitive fight with Muhammad Makayev. I think had him in a pretty nasty knee bar that screwed up Makayev's knee for a little bit. And then I ended up getting that submission again in the second fight. But Ode Osborne got submitted by Asu Amabayev. And you saw what Amabayev's last performance was like. I think he fought Vergara, what, like a week or two ago? And ended up taking that fight to a decision. And Vergara isn't that great on the ground. I mean, he got submitted by Tatsuro Teira. Or I guess he did end up... Wait, what, what am I looking at here? Asu Amabayev. <laughs> Wrong fight. There we go. Uh, CJ Vergara. Yeah, that went to a decision. And Vergara's not that great on the ground. I guess Tetsu Taylor is very good on the ground. However, I think Amabai is more of a, a wrestler first. And Ode Osborne ended up getting submitted there. So I, I just don't think he's that great or at least smart on the ground. He did take quite a bit of time off. It's been seven months since that last fight. So maybe he has improved a little bit. But he's only, not only 32. He is 32. I think Hoppel Hill is just way too um, technical and good on the ground. To where I think he's just going to end up submitting Ode Osborne in the late first round, I will say. Or maybe it's second round because Almabayev, again, has really good wrestling. Well, I guess we'll see a little bit more from Philho in this fight because, again, that first fight with Mikhaev and that second one ended up uh, pretty ended pretty quickly. So um, I'm going to go with Philho in this one. I just don't think Osborne is that smart on the ground. I think he's just going to end up getting submitted in that first round. So. Up the card, we have Josian Nunez versus Chelsea Chandler. I'm going Josian Nunez. She has really good power in her hands. She's really small as well. Uh, 5'2 compared to 5'8 Chelsea Chandler. I think she's actually a featherweight, and she's making the cut to bantamweight here at 135. So we'll see how that cut looks like. I think, I, I guess they're both making the cut here, but Josian Nunez is a lot smaller, so I'm guessing it's going to be a little bit easier than it will be for Chelsea Chandler, who's, a, who's got a little bit more size on her. But I think Josian Nunes being that smaller height is definitely going to give Chelsea Chandler some problems here. I I don't know if she's going to get the KO victory here. I think she's going to win by decision, but I think she's really going to catch um, Chandler a couple times in this fight to make it pretty clear to the judges uh, for Josian Nunes 30-27. Again, it's a lot harder for some of these taller fighters to fight some of these shorter shorter fighters. Again, I I said it again with uh, Volkanovski and Holloway and how I compared that to the Saporia fight and how how Volkanovski is not going to have that big of an advantage that, that he normally has. I, I know this is semi lower level women's MMA, so you can't really apply that in certain cases. But Josie Nunes has the power in her hands. Uh, she's going to be a lot smaller. She's a lot stockier. Unless Chelsea Chandler somehow traps her against the fence, I don't think she's going to win this fight at all. I'm going to go Josie Nunes 30 27 decision. Up the card, we have Mike Davis versus Natan Levy. I'm going to go with Mike Davis. It's really a, a bummer that we never get to see him fight that much i'm gonna be completely honest maybe he's just waiting till he's 30 31 to finally just let loose and, st and start fighting a bunch because he's a, he's a lightweight like he has a little bit of time like he has a, a couple years um of his prime still there i don't know what his goal is in mma i mean maybe he's just trying to test himself at certain points i'm sure he must be living a, a pretty decent lifestyle, I guess, if he's just fighting every now and then. But Mike Davis, really, 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 really good. Uh, beat Vyacheslav Borshev on the feet and took it to the ground. Looked pretty good in that fight. Same thing with the Mason Jones win. Mason Jones 10-0. He's actually a pretty good, or at least I thought he was pretty good. And then the UFC just cut him. So, I mean, Mason Jones went up some against some pretty game opponents, and he's doing pretty good now. So, that's good to see there. But... I mean, Mike Davis, what, lost to Gilbert Burns, and then who else did he lose? Sadiq Youssef. Like, those are some pretty good fighters. And, what, 2018 was a Sadiq Youssef. 2019 was Gilbert Burns, and he's kind of just slowed down. I know he has a lot of cancellations, but it's, it's just been a very long time since Mike Davis was fought. And I always wonder, like, if this dude becomes, like, active, I, I think he can probably maybe make it into the top 15. So Mike Davis is very good on the feet. Very good on the ground as well, and I think that's going to be a problem for Natan Levy. Natan Levy talks about his kicks all the time. They're very nice kicks. He loves his kicks. However, I think Mike Davis is going to be able to get on the inside. Natan Levy doesn't necessarily have an iron chin. I think Mike Davis can get on the inside, catch him, and if he needs to rely on the wrestling, I think he can do that as well and potentially get the submission. So I'm going to go Mike Davis finish in the second round here. Maybe he takes him down, or, or maybe he just goes in and catches Natan Levy, and Natan Levy kind of just goes off bounce a little bit, and Mike Davis turns it into a little bit of like a, a takedown when Natan Levy looks to like throw a kick, and maybe he just ground and pounds him on the ground, or maybe he just hops on the back and submits him. 
I'm going to go with Mike Davis here. They both haven't fought in a while. Year and five months for uh, Mike Davis. Year and three months for Natan Levy. I think Natan Levy was supposed to have a couple of fights. I think one of them was against uh, Pete Rodriguez recently. I guess Alex Reyes as well. I don't remember the Alex Reyes one, but I remember the Pete Rodriguez because I think he missed – someone pulled out there or illness, and then he missed weight or something like that. Yeah. I'm going Mike Davis, finish in the second round. Um, he's he's just very good, I, very well-rounded. I just don't think Natan Levy has that uh, great of a ground, ga- ground game. Good kicks, though. But, again, I just think Mike Davis is pretty good and can get. Up the card, we have GM3 versus Brian Barbarena. I'm going with GM3. Brian Barbarena got taken down and outgrappled by Makhmed Muradov. And I think GM3, who did the exact same thing. Where is this fight at? To Makhmed Muradov. Let's scroll down a little bit. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh... Did the same thing that Mahmoud Muradov won by rear naked choke. Very good grappler as well. I think this fight's going to start out a little bit slower or maybe a little bit more hectic. Maybe Brian Barbarina catches Mirashar a little bit, but I think Mirashar just finds ways to win. Ways to win? Finds ways to win um, in his fights. And I, I do think he's, he's a very, although very, I don't want to say volatile and performance wise. He's 36, so he is getting a little bit older. And I know Brian Barbarina is, is, what, 34, so he's getting older as well. He's a little volatile in performance. Like, he lost to Andre Petrosky, who I think what got finished by Michelle Pereira in his last fight. But he did have some pretty good moments as well in, in that fight as well. Uh, lost to Joe Pfeiffer pretty early in the first round. It's like he's getting knocked out in the first round or he's getting a finish in, like, the second or third round by submission. I think he gets the submission victory over Brian Barbarita probably late second or third round. I guess, I guess that's what the the stats are kind of saying here. But Jared Mouchard looks decent on the feet, pretty long as well. 77 and a half inches of reach 72 inches of reach for brian barbarino will have a five and a half inch reach advantage over him he's more built for middleweight than i will say brian barbara brian barbarino looks like he's holding a lot of weight at middleweight and i just think it's the grappling is just going to be a little bit too much for gerald mershart here and who knows uh gm3 with some of his performances maybe he'll just he'll, he'll end up losing this one but um i think the legend of gm3 reigns on in this one i think we get a submission victory for uh, gm3 in the late second or third round here against Brian Barbarina. Me Kianzad versus Meishi Saison too. I'm going Meishi Saison. I, I feel like she does a really good job at winning fights. I, I It's not very entertaining. However, she knows where she's at in fights. She, she gets the points. She's willing to make it boring um, despite like who she's facing against. Like she, she, she lost to Irene Aldana. However, there's a pretty good argument that she won that fight. I don't remember what the scorecards were for that fight, but she was doing pretty decent in that one. She's pretty game. I think she actually tapped out at some point earlier on, and then she got up kicked to the liver and shut down and hasn't fought since then a year and five months ago. She's 32, so maybe she's improving quite a bit. She's one of the, I will say, decently underrated women's fighters. She's just has really boring performances so a lot of people shut down watching her fights i do too this will probably uh, i'll hopefully i don't fall asleep during this fight but um or at least for the rest of the card that's actually kind of suck but again i just think she'll find a way to win here she looked decent against irene aldana uh won against norma demont kind of stuck that one out to the decision uh lost to raquel pennington by guillotine which is pretty rough to see but she is the champ so in hindsight that's not that bad but Ken, penny kianzad Lost to Ketlin Vera in her last fight by decision. Beat Leon Landsberg and then lost to Raquel Pennington by decision. And it's just like, look at the the lady she's beating and look at the one she's losing to. I know it's kind of the same thing with Meishi Saison. However, I just like the way that Saison finds ways to win. I think this will probably just end up being a, a fence-holding fight. So, Macy Chasson, 29-28 20, decision, I guess, 30-27. This one's going to be a snoozer. Go make some dinner or something. Go eat dinner during this fight before you uh, see the rest of the card. I'll just say that. We have Christian Rodriguez versus Isaac Dolgarian. I'm going to go with Isaac Dolgarian. However, I just want to say something. Christian Rodriguez, if you miss weight on Friday morning, I when I wake up, I'm assuming they're going to do it at like 7 a.m., 8 a.m. When I wake up, maybe I'll be awake for it. Who knows? Uh, if he misses weight by, what, a pound and a half or even more, like it doesn't even matter. If he misses weight, I am going to be so pissed off because this dude i think what has missed all of his all all the weight and except for like one fight or something like that like he missed weight for the reyes cortez fight uh didn't get signed to the ufc lost to jonathan pierce i think this one was up a division right at 145 
and then beat Joshua Williams by Andacana choke at bantamweight. So he made the weight there. However, he fought two contenders. Not two contenders. Two surging prospects that could be eventual contenders in Raul Rosas Jr. I don't remember the exact weight. Maybe it shows his exact weight here. 137 and a half. So he missed weight by two and a half pounds. Beat Raul Rosas Jr. Raul Rosas Jr. had a really good performance in the first round. Kind of tired out a little bit and ended up losing that fight. Christian Rodriguez is a pretty decent fighter as well. But he missed weight by two and a half pounds. Be a, a prospect. It's like, okay, he, he missed weight. He'll come back. Two and a half pounds is quite a bit. However, he fought Cameron Simon, <clears throat> who I really like. A really good prospect. Really good contenders. If you've seen any of his fights, we've been rooting for, or at least I have, uh, been rooting for him not to foul his opponents. He finally got that performance against uh, Terrence Mitchell, where he didn't foul anybody, and got, got that first round finish. However, he did not know Christian Rodriguez was going to miss weight by five pounds christian rodriguez came in at 140 like what the actual hell is going on here i know he's buddies with uh anthony pettis and i know dana white likes pettis however this dude needs to start making weight i don't care <laughs> if if he doesn't feel like making it like he's made the weight it just seems like he doesn't want to put in that extra effort at this point and i think 145 pounds is probably the way to go here i guess this fight is at 145 so thank god he's actually moving up so um i'm not worried about him missing weight i guess uh i i was kind of prepared for this one to be at 135 i'm not gonna lie at a pretty big tangent i'm happy he's moving up to 145 uh, i'll just let that be said however he's not going to be the big guy in this division like he was at 135 i'm happy again this is at 145 isaac dolgarian a very good wrestler and you've, and you've seen Christian Rodriguez get taken down and beaten up on the ground by Raul Rosas Jr. Uh, Cameron Simon got a couple good takedowns as well. Dilgarian is pretty decorated as a wrestler, I think, especially in uh, college or whatever. Uh, pretty decorated there as well. A prospect that a lot of guys were looking at, I mean, he made his debut what, a, a year. No, I'm sorry. He, he was on Dana White's looking for a fight and then made his debut against Francis Marshall about six months ago. Looked pretty good as there as well. Hasn't went to a decision at all in his career, and he is at 145. So a lot of people are looking at him. Uh, good power on the feet, good job on the ground, or good job on the ground. Um, good wrestling as well. I can see him beating Christian Rodriguez by decision here. I think he just outpoints him. I'll say 29-28 decision here. Christian Rodriguez is pretty clean on the feet. Uh, pretty decent strikes as well. I've just been really annoyed with him, so I just want nothing to do with him. Uh, I, I'm not going to, I don't think I'll probably pick him Oh, unless he picks like, unless he fights like someone just coming into the UFC, but Christian Rodriguez is really pissing me off. I'm happy he's at 145 now, but uh, I'm going with Dolgarian here. I think he just out wrestles him on the ground. I think he has the ability to cut him up kind of like what he did against Francis Marshall, who's actually a pretty decent opponent as well, who was seven and one coming into that fight. Peace, keep like elbow him on the ground, bleed him up and then win by TKO that way, or he can... Uh, land some really good strikes on the feet as well but christian rodriguez pretty decent um as a fighter in general but we'll see how this one goes this is a pretty decent test for isaac dolgarian we'll see how he goes or how he does in this fight at the card we have kennedy inzik versus osp i'm going kennedy inzik shuku like osp like what are we doing here um osp lost to felipe lins by ko and felipe lins doesn't really ko anybody um or at least not many people brought shogun hua to a split decision lost to tanner boaster by ko lost to jamal hill by ko like osp's on the second part of his career here at 40 what, almost 41 kennedy Zuchuku has a lot of power in his hands i'm gonna go with kennedy Zuchuku by ko i first round ko minus 500 favorite i think that's probably about right here um osp again i just don't think he's a competition at this point unless you're uh shogun hua who happened to be older than him at the time so i'm going can you use Chukwu by first round kale up the car we have brian battle versus angelusa i'm gonna go with brian battle in this fight i think he did a really good job at just being super technical against aj fletcher i know he ended up getting the submission against him and aj fletcher is just really small and it, the size difference was really apparent there but angelusa i think it's tough enough to endure a lot of the shots that brian battle can give him like we've seen brian battle uh, ko gabe green pretty early as well when we saw like just comparing that gabe green fight to the one that like ian gary had against gabe green you could see or at least it, it just looked super impressive especially right after so 
Um, there's something there with Brian Battle for sure. He's very good on the feet, has a lot of power, especially since moving down to welterweight. The power has definitely shown quite a bit. And then KO'd Takashi Sato pretty brutally as well. But Angelusa, pretty tough dude. He took a lot of the power shots from AJ Fletcher as well. AJ Fletcher, although is smaller, um, decent wrestling, he does have some power in his hands. Again, endured some of the shots from uh, AJ Fletcher in that fight. And then the same thing with Jack Della Maddalena. He did get hurt quite a bit. However, he did endure the power of JDM and didn't get finished. So I, I think that says quite a bit about the toughness of Angelusa in this fight. So I'm going to go with Brian Battle by 30-27 decision. He lost to Manir Lazez by decision as well a year and 10 months ago. He Brian Battle will have, what, a three and a half, three and a half, three inch reach advantage here. I know Angelusa chains out of Kill Cliff and has a pretty good team around him. Hasn't fought in six months, so maybe he's developing quite a bit. Almost 30 years of age as well. I'm going to have to go with Brian Battle. I, I think he just covers distance really well, can use his teeps, does a really good job using his legs. And I think he does has like a little bit more tools on the feet than Angelusa. So I'm going to go with Brian Battle. 29-28 decision, maybe Angelusa, catch, not, I won't say catches him, but lands a couple of good shots. But I, I think actually 30-27 here, I think Brian Battle is just going to be super annoying on the outside, taping and, and using that kicking game with the jab as well. Um, I'm going to go with Brian Battle here. Let's move on. Up the card, we have Tai to Ivasa versus Martian Tybura for our main event here. I'm going to go with Tai to Ivasa here. Martian Tybura will definitely be looking to try and take down Tai to Ivasa. He beat a Romanov by a majority decision there. Probably could have been a draw, but um, has looked pretty decent as fights just taking out some of that fat at the bottom of the heavyweight division. And now he's getting some fat in Tai to Ivasa, but very dangerous fat in Tai to Ivasa that has a lot of KO power. Um, you've seen him get taken down, but the thing with Tui Vasa is I don't think he's going to get beat on the ground. I, although you can take him down like over and over again. Eventually, every fight starts back up on the feet. And I think it's been a while now. Maybe his takedown get-ups and takedown defense will, will, will be a little bit better here. So maybe he'll eventually work his way up. But I just think the power, his leg kicks will definitely be hurting Martian Tybura. I think he's going to be chopping away at Tybura in this fight. But I think he'll eventually get the KO over Tybura. It's just too much power there. He's not like Lewis where you can tell he's like making business decisions at certain points. Uh, Tybusa kind of just lays it all out there. And Tybura, I just don't think is as dangerous as his last couple opponents. Like he fought Volkov, who's extremely dangerous. Uh, Sergey Pavlovich, again, super dangerous. And Cyril Gaon, who's very dangerous as well. So this is a pretty big step down in competition from what he's been seeing. I think he beats Martian Tybura, probably second or third round TKO. I think he probably gets taken down. Maybe he lands a couple of good shots, a couple of good leg kicks on Tybura early on in the first round. Gets taken down. Second round, though, I think he continues to chop away. Gets taken down, but eventually gets back up. And I can see him at like the sec late second or third round ending up KOing Tybura in this fight. Tybura, again, a very big dude. Um, and I do think he's going to he's gonna definitely be able to take down Ty, Ty Tuivasa early on. But I just think tied to a bus just going to invest a little bit more early on in the rounds and i think he eventually gets the win and, and marching tied is what 38 years of age i know it's heavyweight but again that's still kind of old compared to two who's 31 and hasn't had a fight in a while what five months so i'm gonna go with two boss in this fight by ko in the second or third round let me know who you guys have below in the comments section i'll see you guys next time